Good morning. What a way to start an epic morning. Here at Fresh Tea and Coffee, we make ice and I was making ice all last night. I That's what I thought at least. But the power went off at about 10 o'clock. So we're headed out spearfishing guys. Thank you for joining. If you guys like these kind of adventures, hit subscribe down below. We're just gonna go. I'm going out with my cousin brother here. Gonna go out with Nkashi. We're gonna go out for two days. We're gonna try to stock up the fridge. We got a big function coming up in the village. And so we're gonna try to get some fish as well for that. So thank you guys very much for joining. It is barely even morning time here, about 5.30 in the morning. I'm gonna head out. Let's go. So guys, obviously no tree today, so it's not gonna be a fancy video. We're gonna get get straight to it, eh? I heard that there's lots of fish. Yeah. Uh, they're telling me, so. They're all waiting. They're all waiting for us. Apparently the school of Wilder and Saka is waiting for us up there, so. We're not gonna mess around today. We're just gonna get straight to fishing, so. Hope you guys enjoy it. One bomby. And there's so many fish out there. The reef is just going along here. Okay, you see some divers up there. Luis. So, you ready? Ready. <laughs> how many, how long has it been, you were you're telling me, since you've been in the water? Or in the almost, ocean? Almost two years. Yeah. Yeah, because we're not, we're not, uh, we're not ocean people. We're from the, from the bush. <laughs> from the bush. So, there's a, uh, that's our excuse, eh? <laughs> so we're back now. Not much footage from today, obviously, because I only shot two fish. Not the best day for me, but uh, the boys did good. We probably filled up about half and half a big cooler or an esky, as they call it in Fiji. I don't even know where the word esky comes from. It must be from New Zealand, Australia. <laughs> esky. Like if you go to Canada, you say esky. Like nobody, nobody, knows. nobody would be like esky, like an Eskimo. Yeah. Maybe that's where it came from, Eskimo. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> ah, whatever. So this is what our tea looks like. Just some crackers, some coffee, and uh, and this gorgeous view. <laughs> oh wow! Cheers. So you guys know the routine. When we uh, come to Alan's house, we always have to shoot a few of these small fish, these dingy. We make soup. Soup dingy. Look how it's good. yellow it is. Yeah, sure. Okay. Two. Two? Two? Sure. Sure. The yellow means that it's uh, full of... That's all oil from the fish itself, right? Eh? There's no oil added in here. That's just all fat from these little fish. And then next door to that we got some fish eggs boiling and then we're gonna fry them. Mm. And Gus about some cassava that he pulled last week. It's as good as it gets. It's as good as it gets. Ooh, some uh, kumquat lemon. First taste? First taste? Number one. <laughs> <laughs> so the date of this recording is actually Stephanie's birthday. So she has graciously allowed me to come and be out here and get some fish for our house and also for the uh, function that we're coming up for my auntie who passed away and actually it's um really bizarre i'll stop eating while i talk to you 
um, because my auntie, she just lived just across like 50 meters from our house. We see her every day and uh, she'd bring food and she, the day that she passed away, she came and charged her phone at our house. And so I guess all to say that life is like that sometimes. You just assume that you know when you're gonna, when your time's up, you're gonna live to like some ripe old age and enjoy time with your kids and it's not always like that so I guess that's why I'm grateful for moments like this eh? mm -hmm. just to be out here and away from <clears throat> cell phone service from the network and everything like that and so but yeah on on the note of Steph's birthday I gotta say like I'm married to probably the most amazing woman in the world like, it's pretty crazy that I'm married to a woman from Canada who chooses to be in Fiji and be in the place that we are in Fiji. There's a lot of people come to Fiji and they live in the city or, you know, in towns with lots of conveniences and stuff like that. But um, it's pretty special to be doing life with Stephanie. So me and Stephanie have now been married for 13 years. And the first five years of our marriage, we didn't have any kids. So a lot of people get married either because they're having a kid or they have kids right away after they get married. We had a long time. It was just me and Stephanie. And yeah, I feel like we made the most of those years. Just hanging out, we go. The town we lived in was uh, called Kelowna in British Columbia. It's a uh, lakefront town and so we just go walk on the board rock in the evening, watch live music and all that kind of stuff. Just hang out. We used to longboard together, which is like skateboarding. We really enjoyed our single years. Um, yeah, and then we decided it was time to, actually funny story, we decided it was time to have kids. Cause we didn't want to be old people. We got married really young. So I was uh, 19 when uh, we got married and Steph was 21. And now I am 32, and as of today, she's 34. And so, um, yeah, we had a few years together because we were still young. We weren't really in a rush to have kids. And actually, funny story is that when my dad came over one time to our house, and he said, when are you guys going to have kids? When are you going to have grandkids? You guys know the pressure that you get from grandparents. And we said, we'll have grandkids when you shave your beard. Because my dad never shaved his beard. I've never seen him with a shaved face in my whole life. And after like 10 minutes, he came downstairs with a shaved beard. Clean shaven face. That was kind of the hint. I mean, it wasn't because of that that we decided to have kids, but it was like, that's just funny. So that was a full commitment moment for my dad. And the biggest hint ever. So, five years in, we had, we decided to have kids, and then we had a leaky. And, uh, yeah, that was the seventh year of our marriage when we had our first child, Eliki, our oldest boy. And so that marked probably the hardest year of our marriage. A point that was actually like make or break it. And where we thought like, because we were, you know, Stephanie was running her business. We were working together in that. And we actually had a conversation one night. We're like, we're just like, we're just business partners. We don't even really show affection for each other we don't really love each other and and it was like we didn't actually know if we were gonna make it and so we did obviously and um i was working in the automotive industry stephanie was running the cleaning business that she started then i quit the uh, my career in automotive service and joined up with stephanie and then we had our youngest child seven i you guys all know as well and uh yeah as of that before that i had uh, actually quit yeah quit the automotive service industry and i was part of the cleaning business so i kind of stephanie's like the big goals person and looks is it really easy for her to look at like ten thousand feet above i'm like the systems and processes guy i'm like okay that's a great idea how are we going to systematize that and make it actually actionable for employees and for the company it's, pretty good com it's a pretty good combo. And I think that's why we work really well together. But, um, yeah, we were working together. We had our second child, Sephaniah, 
And then we visited Fiji, obviously every couple of years. And then we decided like, you know what? After one trip, something needs to be done. And uh, there's a lot of potential here. And so we decided that um, after we went back to Canada, we had a conversation. I talked to one of my mentors about doing business in Fiji and he said, talk to me when you actually move to Fiji. And so that was kind of the thing. Thank you, Krishna. That kicked it all off for us. And we we're like, okay, if we're going to do this, we actually have to move there. We went for a drive one night, decided that's what we're going to do. Set up our business in Canada so that it could be run remotely with our great manager named Sierra. Thank you so much, Sierra, for all you've done for us over the years. And uh, yeah, packed up everything, moved in with our friend Don for six months, and then uh, moved to Fiji, where we've been since 2020. And so, I don't know if you guys are interested in the story or not, but that's kind of our journey over the last few years. And as of now, this is year 2024, I'm 32, she's 34. And I feel like 2024 is another make it or break it year. And it seems like it's gonna be a make it year. And we have shot many shots and I don't call that failure. I would call failure not trying at all. And so we will keep trying until we have no more try left in us and we are far from that. So. I think you guys should be along for the ride. We're going to enjoy this evening. We're gonna have some grog after that. After this, just building my base here. And then we'll go do some more diving tomorrow. So, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, day two. I'm about to jump in on the secret spot. As you guys can see, there's uh, no landmarks behind me. Guess which island that is. I'm not telling anybody where this is. Secret spot, eh? Secret spot. <laughs> All right. Flip some, flip some. This bottle is 1.25 or what? 1.5 liters or 2.0 stone. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, oh. I'm gonna make some cocotta, uh, which is like a base mega raw Indian dish recipe. But this is the big stone. I don't want anybody critiquing my Philippine skills, okay? Hey. This is just push down. So just take off the meat. Fresh from the sea. So we just take this, we'll cube it up, and then we'll put it in the container. Welcome back to the kitchen. Wash this off, so we cubed up all the very precise kind of work, you know? Okay. Very precise. So, washing it off, and uh, I got my bowl here, all the fresh lemons. <laughs> Lemons. Okay. Oh. Ah. How about the seats? Worried about the seats? Yeah. Don't worry about the seats. Don't worry, apparently we're not worried about the seats. Alright, good. Okay. 
Diamond's in. And uh, we got our chilies now. Is it too much? Is it too much? Oh. New chopping board. New chopping board. <laughs> I was going to stare at the fact. <laughs> <laughs> So the lemon, the acid in the lemon cooks the meat. That's the science behind all this. And uh, just leave it for a few minutes. Just give it a stir. If you need salt, then we got lots of salt around here. Not the salt. Maybe the salt there. Salt there. Too. Endless salt. <laughs> just stir some. You eat it already. Yeah. Try it. Try it. Piece. Mm. Huh? Yeah. Nice. It's a perfect recipe. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank so you. Don't have to dive again with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Get stuck in the sound of this. Mm. It might not look like much, but it tastes good, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Looks like he's fighting the current pretty good over there. Yeah, by the way, we are outside the reef. Yeah. This yeah, is where... The reef, your, your life is no longer available. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these waves are pretty big. Why? Someone help us. Oh. <laughs> 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 I was just down there, yeah. I was just aiming at it, getting ready to pull the trigger, and then I went, like, yeah, what now? That was awesome. And I had no idea you were there. Yeah, yeah that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so funny. Uh, What's that? Uh, Second band? Yeah, good. Yeah, what? Because I didn't know it was my first Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Like, but it's. The only reason I put the second shot was just to make sure it didn't get away. Oh, yeah. I'm not trying to steal your... Your spear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think you uh, No, I don't think so. I think it was, it was okay. My shot was terrible though. Good one, man. <laughs> so, Gashe. What's the feeling like? What's the feeling? You're addicted now? Addicted. Oh, you're always addicted. Huh? Just not to this, uh, not this water type, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a nice one, too. That's a I can't believe <laughs> That was so funny. <laughs> when I went down. Oh, really? Because Filipino was like, Hey, there's a wheel down there. Wheel, wheel. So I dove and I just went down. And I was kind of spinning in circles, as you guys saw. And then spinning in circles. It's a nice one, eh? And then I saw it coming out of the corner of my eye and I just... <laughs> then I, I went to aim for it and then all of a sudden something came from the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Good job. I'm just chilling up here on the boat. <clears throat> job fish. Love it. Nice one. I actually don't know what these are called, the Uvigia, but I'll show you guys a little something. My friend Sam made this Fiji fish identification guide. And if you go in here, okay. yeah, you can go onto his website to search wet mammal fish identification guide okay. online, and you can download the PDF for free 
with the code BULA. So everybody in Fiji can download this guide for free with the code BULA. And you just go in, go down to the section that says, here you see it says job fish. And there you will find the name of it in Fijian. I've actually known uh, friends who've already downloaded it who aren't familiar with Fiji fish names. And they've been able to figure out when they go to the market and stuff like that, what fish they're looking at. Pretty helpful. Thanks, Sam. And that's available to everybody in Fiji with the code BULA. I'm just chilling in the boat here while everybody else is out. I was just thinking like, you know, it's so relaxing just to be out here. And there's very few things that I do in life or moments in life where I'm not thinking about anything. Those are fishing, those it was playing rugby, and uh, yeah, working out or going for a run, road run, or just being in the gym. And so that's why I love fishing. There's just something about it. Like even if you try, like sometimes while I'm just snorkeling along, waiting to see fish, I'll, I'll try to, you know, think about something that I need to do when I get home. And before I know it, I forgot. <laughs> and my mind is just blank and you're not stressed and there's no cell phone service. I don't know, it's just rare right now in life to be able to, I guess, to be able to clock out and actually be free in your mind. And this place allows me to do that. That's why I love it so much. There's a couple guys right here and then there's a couple guys over there. You can see the buoy going up and down. When you're in the boat and you're watching these guys, every time you see a set of fins go up in the air and they go down, you're just like, I wonder what they're looking at right now. Beautiful moments. There you go. That kind of a dive right there is a dive. When, they, when a guy splashes like that on his dive and he makes a quick dive, there you go. And you got two guys going down. That means that they probably saw something. School of Walu or something like that. If there's one fish, you'll get one guy going down, but if there's a bunch of fish, you'll get a couple. And then if you see the butt of their gun come up, you know that they got a fish and they're fighting it on the rope. So always the saddest part is having to leave. So, what a great, great couple days with Alan. Thanks so much, bro. Really appreciate you. And hanging out with us, showing us the spots. Now we have some food to give for the funeral. Go back to that. And uh, yeah, it should be a busy week. Very busy week. Even though it's like Tuesday already. Just show us the esky. Whoa, let me see. Good job, good job. Next time, save some fish for us, eh? <laughs> So this is how we have to clean the fish tonight, by our muddy river. Uh, we have a new cameraman <laughs> behind the scenes. His name is Va. Yo! Sorry! <laughs> like a very lot of fish. And so we have to gut them all, and then sort through, share, fight over them. And then take some to the... I think we're going to actually go to the funeral tonight. Our family is going to go together. And we'll just give them the fish so that they can decide what they want to do with it. So that'll work out well. In the meantime, Basti wants to eat fish eggs. Yeah? yeah. That's the eggs, eh? So, we were, what did you do with those? Uh, last night, actually, Alan made them for us. We didn't show you guys, but he just boiled them for like half an hour. <clears throat> What's over here? Eh? Uh, Liver. Boiled them for half an hour and then fried them with garlic and onion and soy sauce. So it's pretty good, it's pretty tasty. You want this one with the yellow? <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Right. Here's all the fish. That's the barracuda, actually, and one job fish. That one is tastier than the others. Walu section, sangha variety section, small sangha. Donu section and more sangha, vilu. So 
Where are those ones? Oh yeah, and this one, the kids section. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to organize this. I think all of those will go to the funeral. Over there. We'll split all the, all the rest. And should be good. We're actually going to go tonight. We're going to go tonight and uh, go see the family. And as a family, we are going to go and see the family. So, these fish will be delivered tonight so we don't have to put them on ice again. This night never really ends, eh? Yeah, yeah. All right, on to the next thing, I guess. But uh, Garcia has to take his his vilu, though. I think most of the vilu go to the to the funeral, but you have to take your vilu. Eh? Uh -huh. You have to take your vilu. Yeah, I think it's uh, that one. Or <laughs> 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 oh, that one underneath. <laughs> All right, hello. Oh. Hello, hello. Hello. Back again. Yeah, and I'm sunburned. Mm. So, we just, you guys just saw us just tell the family that, uh, that we have fish and we brought a couple mats. Nice. So, I'm pretty tired actually. Mm. But we just gotta go drop these off. And so, it's late at night, there's no power in the village. Nobody has deep freezers. Our deep freezer is full. So, we were just saying maybe they'll have to have fish for breakfast. <laughs> soup. And then I said we were saying, yeah, they're just gonna have <laughs> they're gonna have soup, they're gonna sleep all day. <laughs> I never <Yeah>. that. <laughs> so they're gonna uh, be like this, this bunch of boys are gonna be so lucky to having you? this for breakfast. Right? Well, they can't say no, even if it's not a breakfast food, they yeah. can't say no. Right? Yeah. I said add some greens, it'll make them lively throughout the day. Oh yeah, that's true, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can go pick some... Uh, Belle and... Uh, some salted grass leaf. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Alan. Thank you for taking us out. We'll see you in the weekend very, very soon. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed our little uh, lunchtime recipe. A little uh, that we made. Yeah, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.